Alrighty, today I'm here to talk to you about the thyroid. Now I'm here to talk to you about the thyroid itself, but I'm here to talk to you about other issues more peripherally that can ch cause a thyroid problem. And I'll kind of go into that. I took a lot of notes, so I'm going to go back and forth to my notes to you, so excuse me, but <clears throat> it's a pretty tough topic. You know, from my understanding, we're seeing such a high incidence of hypothyroidism, and according to Kayla Daniels, we're seeing it in younger and younger children. You know, one of the things that can actually c affect the thyroid peripherally, or T4 to T3 conversion, is soy. And there's many others. We'll go into that, such as mercury, um, high estrogen levels, um, deficiencies in zinc or selenium, um, high cortisol levels, high DHEA levels, um, some type of adrenal stress or abnormal physiological pathways of the adrenal glands can affect the thyroid because they're on the same axis. Same thing with the gonad axis in the, on the gut axis. They're all on the same pathway, and as Jeffrey Blant says, the HPTAGG axis, hypothalamus pituitary, thyroid, adrenal, gut, gonad. So they're all on the same axis. So if you have a problem with one, you have a problem with all of them. Or if you're seeing a problem in the gut, I mean, that could be a million different things, it's going to affect the adrenal gland. It's going to affect your hormones, and it's going to affect the thyroid. So hopefully if you have a thyroid problem, you're on medication, we see this all the time. And I know it, sometimes I get a little irritated and I seem a little passionate about it, but it, it's frustrating. We have a lady that we're working with. She's been on thyroid medication for um, T3 medication for, I think it's 20 years. And we looked at her labs 20 years ago. She brought them in, you know, with all the paperwork. And she doesn't even have a thyroid problem. The doctor treated her based on her symptoms of her hair falling out. Her hands were cold. She was gaining weight. She was fatigued and depressed. So her doctor, based on that, did a blood lab, her TSH, T3, T4, TPO, reverse T3, free T4, free, all that came back normal. It was a full panel. Put her on the medication, and now she's suffering. So now we got to do the legwork and rewind and rewind and rewind. It's going to take a long time. So enough of me talking. Well, if you're going to do a blood lab, let me go into that. Do a blood lab, but ask. Don't just get TSH. That's a useless lab. Get TSH, TPO, T3, T4, reverse T3, and free T4, free T3. Get all that. That's a full panel that's going to tell you what's going on. At the same time, by itself, completely useless. You need an adrenal hormone lab. You need some type of GI lab. Um, you need an expanded chemistry profile to look at the immune system. And you need a, did I miss one? Adrenal hormone. No, I didn't miss one. So you need those. And you don't need all of them. You just got to match it for the person what's going on and individualize it. So what does the thyroid do? Well, some of the physiological effects of the thyroid are on growth, development, and metabolism. We look at it as the kind of master regulator of metabolism. What thyroid hormones do is they stimulate a diverse metabolic activities in most tissues, leading to an increase in basal metabolic rate, and therefore, therefore controls body temperature. That's why most people that have thyroid problems typically are cold. Now, we can't base the symptom, we can't base diagnosis on the symptom. I can't diagnose, but still, if someone's cold, that could be a, min, a million different things. They're not eating right for their metabolic type. They could have severe deficiencies in the adrenals causing a thyroid problem. It could be a true thyroid problem. Um, on and on and on. I mean, there's millions of, of issues. The interesting thing, though, when it comes to the thyroid, you always want to take a look at cholesterol as well. That's why an expanded chemistry profile through your doctor is important because the plasma concentrations of cholesterol and triglycerides, which is a completely different thing, are inversely correlated with thyroid hormone levels. So a lot of the times, you can see an indication of hypothyroidism with increased cholesterol concentration in the plasma. So if you're seeing low thyroid levels and high cholesterol, you can kind of make some assumptions, you want to look at other things, that you could be hypothyroid. Now, don't diagnose yourself or work with a doctor. Now, when it comes to carbohydrate metabolism, what, do, what does the thyroid do? It actually, basically, these hormones stimulate almost all aspects of carbohydrate metabolism. They help with insulin-dependent entry of glucose into the cells, and on and on. So it basically helps with all the foods you're eating, breaking them down in your metabolism. We kind of go into that. So how does it work? Well, it's quite complex. You have the hypothalamus pituitary thyroid. Anytime you need the thyroid to kick in, the hypothalamus releases a hormone. It's thyroid-releasing hormone which stimulates the pituitary to release thyroid-stimulating hormone, which stimulates the pituitary to release 
the hormones that it needs to, re to release. Now, I don't want to go into it. That's the basics of it. I don't want to go into the major, major backbone of it, but we've all heard of T3 and T4. Um, there's other key factors that are involved in that, such as um, tyrosine is involved in that, selenium is involved in that. Now, beside these hormones, the most important thing is when the body releases the TRH and the TSH, which stimulates the thyroid to kind of produce these hormones, there's many things that can happen. You want a smooth transition of T4 to T3. This happens by a specific enzyme, two of them actually, called 5-deodinase and 5-prime-deodinase. Well, 5-prime-deodinase is actually dependent on selenium. So if you're deficient in selenium, and you see this in a lot of people nowadays, as well as a lot of people with immune system dysfunctions, you can't make that conversion. What happens is you produce too much active T3. And at the same time, if someone has a liver problem, you'll get that inhibition of the 5-deodinase enzyme, and what happens, they overproduce reverse T3. So you can have a kidney issue, a liver issue, a deficiency in selenium, a deficiency in zinc, and you're not going to make that conversion. So the question is, when you go to your doctor and they do these labs, and this is kind of how we look at it, when they do these labs, a the thyroid panel alone, which is not a good thing to do, they put you on T3, or they put you on T4, or they put you on whatever they put you on. It, that's not always the case. It could be a pituitary issue. Um, I worked with a girl once that actually got adjusted by an osteopath in, in France. She got her pituitary actually manipulated, and it cured her thyroid problem that she was having. She was actually hyperthyroid. So it's not always the thyroid. Like I said, it could be the adrenals, the gut, the gonad system, which is your hormones, or the thyroid itself. But a lot of the times, research is showing that 90% of the time, it's coming somewhere else peripherally. And you have to look at this. So if you're having a T4 to T3 conversion, or you have high TSH, low TSH, you have high T3, high T4, high T3, low T3, whatever you have, you gotta look elsewhere. You gotta see if you have a selenium deficiency. You gotta see if you have a zinc deficiency, because if you are, you're not gonna make that conversion. You gotta make sure that you're eating adequate protein and not overeating carbohydrates. Decrease in protein and increase in carbohydrates can decrease the amount of conversion in the thyroid, it can actually slow it down. High insulin levels in the body can actually slow it down. That's correlated with the pancreas as well as the adrenal glands and cortisol. These things can also slow down the conversion of T4 to T3 and, and all the other pathways within that. Increased stress in the body. The adrenal glands, if you have any type of stress in your body, you're not adapted to it internally or externally, you're going to have an increased cortisol production. That can happen if, happen if you're actually eating diet too much in carbohydrates and you end up becoming hypoglycemic. The body releases cortisol and adrenaline to actually fight this. So what hap happens is it mobilizes sugar. Now you can become insulin resistant, but at the same time, that increased cortisol levels in the body will slow down the thyroid pathways, but also decrease the conversion of T4 to T3 and slow down your metabolic rate. Certain heavy metals like uh, mercury and cadmium, smoking, tobacco, or heavy metal exposure can inhibit um, T4, T3 conversion. Compromised liver or kidney function, so get those looked at. Um, imp impaired sulfation pathways of the liver, and on and on and on. Another one is ingestion of soy. I've seen too many people with hypothyroidism from ingesting, ingesting soy. So I know this is kind of a big topic to talk about on YouTube. It's I didn't really go into it too much. I'm going into it surfacey because I only get 10 minutes. That's why I talk fast when I do this. I only get 10 minutes. But the lesson is now that you're aware, if you're on medication, I'm not telling you to go off it. I'm not going to tell you how to treat it because there's specific herbs that you can use. But a lot of the times, if you have a thyroid issue, look elsewhere. Work with a practitioner, functional medicine doctor from Functional Medicine University. Work with someone. Call me, 760-597-9727. Set up a free consult. The bottom line is, if you've had a full panel, get your adrenals, your gonad, and the gut pathways looked at. If you've had, had not had a full panel, like I mentioned, get a full panel. You should not be on those medications unless so. So hopefully you've learned something. You see the basic pathways, but also what can actually cause a thyroid problem. And a lot of the times, your thyroid problem is not the problem. It's the effect. You have to find the cause. So I'm out of here. Thanks for tuning in. I'll check you next week.